Welcome to Narrowboat Precious Jet. My name's Steve Tyrrell and you join me today on a Sunday morning, rather chilly. Um, we're in the boat doing a bit of work. Um, like I've said in the last vlog or two, a bit limited as to when I can get down there and do stuff on the boat. However, time is of an issue now because um, towards the end of April, early May, uh, my house is to be sold. So by the time the house goes, I need a boat to live on because obviously I've got nowhere else to live then. Um, well, I have, but I want to live on the boat. Anyway, today we have with us um, little Charlie Dog, who's down here a lot. Hello, Charlie boy. Um, so we've got Charlie with us today. He's not too keen on when I'm hammering and messing about in the boat. He gets a bit um, skittish, but he'll be okay. So anyway, let's show you what's going on at the moment and, and uh, where we left off on the last video. emptying out the water tank so like I think I said earlier um, right I know on the last video I had half my stuff in and I said that's the end of the video but it's not okay so the dinette 90% of the dinette is out that's part of it there look and the top so my water tank is under the tug deck which I've probably told you already um, and like I said earlier the overflow um, Although the overflow from the tank goes outside the boat, the overflow from the filler doesn't. So the overflow from the filler um, just empties straight into the bilge, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure it shouldn't. Anyway, because of that, I need to get in the bilge. So, um, yeah, the whole front of the boat's going to get stripped out now. So I'm going to take the water tank out. The Audi central heating pump's in there as well. That's coming out. Uh, I don't want it. I'm going to have a Ibispatcha or a, Wabas a Wabasto, one or the other. I think they're pretty much both the same. I'm going to have one or the other, um, and that's how I'm going to provide heating for the radiators on the boat. So that'll do the radiators and hot water for the chlorifier. And then heating in the cabin will just be the log burner. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll have radiators in there. I think I'll probably only have radiators in the bathroom and the back cabin. Because the front here, I, I quite like the log burner. I, I, I think it's nice. And I was going to have the log burner heating the radiators. But it's just too inefficient. And I've heard some horror stories about when the, when you build the temperature up in the log burner, it boils up the uh, water and it boil, bubbles out the overflow. And I don't really want that. So I'm going to have the central heat and go through the herbis batcher and have all that set up in the back cabin to go through the chlorifier. Because the chlorifier will be in the back cabin under the bunk anyway, under the, the, the boatman's cabin somewhere. So that's where we are at the moment, just emptying out the water tank. Um, once I've got this back piece out, I'll, uh, I'll give you some more. You, you don't need to see me ripping out, it's just damage, just wanton damage. So, um, and the floor at the front here, uh, not as spongy as the rest, but it is the board. I, I don't know what, I don't know whether they were cheap ply or what, I don't know, but they are quite, they don't seem very strong. You know, they do seem quite bouncy, which is, oh, I don't know. I don't know whether that's a good thing for the floor or not. So anyway, as it turns out, the whole floor in the boat, front to back, the whole floor is coming out. Or well, the sole. It's the sole, isn't it, in the boat? Anyway, let's keep going. Let's see what happens.
Right, so that is out. Although it's still built, I've got to collapse it to get it out properly, which is probably going to mean destroying it because everything's rusty to hell. Um, let's show you the other side. So, this is obviously an area of very bad water leaks, possibly through the door, more likely through the water tank, which is right there. Yeah. That is rotten as look at it, it's just falling apart and then the floor underneath, this is the floorboards underneath. Yeah, that's just as bad look. That's soft as. I um I was told me the idea of leaving the dinette in and not going this far up. I'm glad I took it out now. This whole wall, this is all gonna come out. That's all loose, that's all gonna come out. But that, that also gives me access then to get in there. And then whether I have um Obviously, I'm going to board that off when I'm done. I'm going to board it off and, and do something here to keep that part of the boat in there separate from the living part of the boat. Because I don't think it's as well insulated in there as it is out here. But, you know, I'm going to have some vents of hot air going through. Um, I'm thinking now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the bilge open in the front of the boat. Because it looks like here, this wooden floor goes all the way through. Um, so I think from here, the bulkhead here forwards, I'm going to have the bilge open, completely open bilge. And then obviously from here back, there'll be a sole. And then under the sole, I'm thinking of having small computer fans just to um, circulate the air through the bilge uh, and keep the bilge, um, well, fairly, fairly moisture free. So, right, let's get this, uh, last of this dinette sorted try and get it out somehow and then um, let's see where we go from there because we're going to start lifting floors again now and, and moving ballast and having a look at having a look at the condition of the uh, the base plate under here and also around by the water tank not looking forward to this there's lots of uh, there's lots of um, ballast in the front there lots of ballast I mean like broken slabs and all sorts um, I think what I'll probably have to do is do the back of the boat up to here somewhere put the floor in get the ballast out the front stack it back there do the front of the boat put all the ballast back <coughs> oh excuse me <coughs> oh sorry dust so let's go and take a bit of a look and this is the reason um why i wanted to do it i didn't realize it was going to be as bad as this and i was told with the idea of leaving the dinette as it was but i'm glad we have now so this is the front of the boat. Um, that's the water tank, 300 litre water tank, rather nice, stainless steel, perfect. Um, what I think I'm going to do is get rid of some of this ballast here. The Audi central heating hot water pump um, boiler is just the other side of this ballast in there. So um, what we're going to do is uh, get rid of this rotten wood, as you can see. Obviously at some point the doors leaked here, because that door there is to let water in or the water tank or the central heating has leaked at some point because this wood here um, this is absolutely rotten as lot there's no structural there's no structure left in this wood at all it's all uh, rotten as a peach rotten as a peach rotten as whatever you want to call it um, yeah so that's all got to come out and then the plan is clear out under the tug deck get everything out because there's some dodgy wiring under there uh, get the water tank out check out uh, make sure everything's okay with the water tank I want to get another water tank built exactly the same um, that's 300 liters there uh, I'm gonna have another water tank next to it where the ballast is there move perhaps move that one over a little bit and have another water tank next to it <clears throat> and then get rid of this ballast under the water tank um, obviously there's, there's probably around about a ton of ballast in the front here maybe a bit more and a majority of it is this broken slabs um, not my cup of tea. It does a job, it's heavy, it does a job. Um, not very pretty though. And I want things to be pretty and fairly practical. So this, this is an area I wanna use for storage, for my water tanks, for different things, for bits and bobs, you know, just for general shite. And then on top of the water tank here, I want a little bedroom. Well, not a bedroom as such. Not, not like you think as a bedroom under a tug deck that you see on most boats. What I'm going to have is, uh, I'll probably, I've spoke about this in the past. 
a bed that pulls out and slides out on rollers from under the top deck so that top bit there I want to use as a bit of a bed area um, more for bed storage than anything else um, you might end up sleeping with your feet under the tug deck bit maybe um, by a couple of three four feet maybe but we'll see we'll see how much I can get it working how much room I have because the tug deck underneath here is about seven foot so that's ideal for a bed but obviously I need somewhere for my water tanks so um, yeah the water tanks gonna go under there and then the bed like the, the pull out bed on top of it right anyway Let's get up with cleaning this. Um, I'm not going to video me tidying up this rubbish because you've seen me tidy up rubbish before. So um, let's uh, let's tidy this up a little bit, get rid of some of this wood, and then we'll have another look to see what the base plate is like because um, I know in places it, it isn't bad. It's, it's not bad at all, but there is surface rust. So that I want addressing. So, right, let me tidy this up. And uh, in a split second... <laughs> Give half a day for me probably but a split second for you you'll see the photograph of um of how we are now so right stand by okay that's all the rotten wood out for this bit of the boat anyway i still have to go under there because the wood protrudes underneath that ballast and that bilge um, bilge the water tank so um that's all got to come out i'll have to get my son over here to give me a hand and what i'll probably do for now is I'll put a couple of boards out there on the tug deck um, and then we'll lift the ballast out now and put it whichever side of the boat it's on I'm gonna lift it out and put it on that on that side of the boat outside uh, and then what I'm gonna do is each side of the ballast I'm gonna weigh and then um, get rid of all these slabs the bricks I'll keep look because them bricks they can go into the floor at the front they can go into the floor and then uh, I've got access to some steel billet um, that will go into the front of the boat as well and then hopefully get rid of all these slabs and that will make it quite neat at the front even though no one's going to see it and it's not out of the way and you're never going to see it I just look at them slabs they're just I don't know it's just not it's just simply not cricket sir so anyway let's get rid of these broken slabs not now but um, in a bit so there's two <clears throat> two bucket falls two big industrial cleaning bucket falls of uh, rotten wood that's all the floorboards there and this is this is what's left of one of the floorboards anyway look you can see the end of it is just uh, it's just yeah it's just all right Mark. so um, it's nice to see it was painted though um, well some of it was painted I'm assuming because because um, some's painted I'm assuming the whole all the boards are painted I wouldn't have thought they'd have just painted a little bit and left the rest <laughs> You never know, you never know. Right, a quick one for the rest of you now. See down there, look, the wires that run. These are the, uh, these are the 12 volt wires that run for my uh, bow thruster. And they run back to the engine bay. Would there be an issue if they were placed in conduit and then ran through the bilge out of the way? Would that be an issue? Would there be a problem there? I mean, the conduit would go from the very front of the boat all the way through one pipe, all the way through to the engine bay, then back up. So even if the bilge had water in it, the 12 volt cable is sealed, the conduit will be sealed. So it's never gonna get, I mean, you'll get a bit of moisture in there, you're bound to anyway, cause it's down the bilge, but would it be an issue? Would it really be a massive problem if the, if the, um, if the charging wires from my bow thruster were in the bilge let me know what your thoughts are comment down below i really need to know because um, when this floor goes you're going to see this before the floor goes back in um, and when the floor goes back in if it's not an issue that's going in the bilge yeah along with the the, the gray wire that was with them that you can see i don't know, you can see that there look. there's three wires look you've got your red which is your positive and your black which is your earth and then that wire that's your bow thruster control wire so that's the one that controls your left and right and all that sort of all that gubbins so all them three there could run in the run in the in the conduit all the way through and then the other thing is obviously my water tanks there and my bilge pump is there look not bilge pump water pump and it comes through through the accumulator and then down into the side of the boat here look you can just see there's a water pipe there look there that goes in and then down the side of behind these boards so 
if I just came out now from the water tank, bear in mind I'm going to try and get two water tanks. If I came out of here now, straight into the side of the boat there, no pump, not yet anyway, and then ran ran that pipe all the way down to the end to the kitchen here, and then I had my water pump here at the kitchen. Would that be a major issue? Would that be a problem? Or does the pump have to be down by the tank? You know, I, I know it's easier for to pump water from the source, but it's not going to. You know, what are your thoughts? Let me know what you think. Because if it it'd be easier maintenance-wise if that water pump was down here in the kitchen cabinets or under the kitchen cabinets. There's the accumulator as well. Look. You know, it'd be a lot easier if 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 the accumulator and the water pump were under the kitchen cabinets. <laughs> I mean, if it has to be at the front, fine. I can I can accommodate it. It's not an issue. It's there anyway. Wouldn't be a wouldn't be a major problem. Um, I just thought if I have one joint out the tank into the pipe and then down, there's less joints to leak under the front of the boat where I'm not going to be a great deal of the time. But if I have to have the pump here, you're only going to add three or four joints. So you know, does it really matter? So that's another thing I'd like your thoughts on, guys. Because obviously I'm not a boat specialist in, in any way. I'm just um, coating boating on a budget uh, using his lovely, amazing quote. I'm just winging it. Um, I know a few things. Um, but yeah, when it comes to stuff like plumbing for boats and, and, and stuff like that, I'm winging it. The electrics, I'm, there's a, a chap in the, in the marina here next to me in the wharf who's uh, jolly good on 12 volt. And also a, a, a very good friend of mine, Ian Bourne. He's a 12 volt whiz kid, so um, yeah. Uh, the good thing about Ian is he's a little bit like me. He's got OCD, so he likes things to look not only be perfect but to look perfect. It's it's okay if they're safe, that's fine. But I like them to look amazing. I want to be able to open the bilge or open any part that's got the electrics in, and it just look amazing. So anyway, guys, comment below, see what you think, and uh, yeah, we're getting there slowly. We're getting there slowly. I don't think I'm going to be uh, ready to move into it by the time the house sells, but if I can get a camp bed somewhere, I'll do what uh, um, the boat that James did. I'll do what James does and just sleep on here on a camp bed because by then it'll be spring and the weather will be warm and yeah, it won't be an issue. And I can do the majority of the work then while I'm uh, living on the boat. Okay, guys, right, next. Right, so down in the bilge here now, um, there is a bit of surface rust. You can see it's a bit flaky. So. I have my multi-tool with an old blade on the end so uh, I'm going to use that for a little bit of um, uh, brush removal so let's see how we get on say it's perfect and I wouldn't say it's down to bare metal but hey it's not shiny steel but look at that that's a really good finish that is quite happy with that yeah so I think I'm gonna have a go at the bilge the rest of it under under here look and try and get as much of this uh, rust out of the way as possible um, can't do anything there because I say I've got to wait for my lad to give me a hand to lift all that there's lots of slabs and bricks under there so He's Charlie up. <laughs> he wants to help. Bless him. He'd sit while I'm working on the boat. He'd he'd quite happily come and sit on my lap and um, and watch, you know. And then as soon as you get up and try and move around, he's like, "Well, I'm off. See you, bye." And he and he's gone. <laughs> he's down the other end of the boat. You know, he ain't daft. You know, he doesn't want nothing landing on him. So yeah, <laughs> he's a little monkey, ain't you, Charlie? You little monkey. Either that or you, you love the camera, one or the other. Right, let's carry on. We're doing this for a minute and um, we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. If I can get Charlie off my lap now. Mm -hmm. 
so sanding out the rust out of the bilge with the multi-tool with an old wood cutting blade on the end so let's have a look so I've just got the, the multi-tool here uh, Makita and it's got an old blunt wood cutting blade on that I had uh, damaged cut, trying to cut uh, a nail I think that was in wood so that bluntened it off so I thought rather than chuck it away I'll use it for sanding in the bilge and I tell you what that's done a bloody good job you can see the insulation under there I've got to cut that out so I can get to the, uh, the side plate but that's come out really nice that's all right I'm happy with that see that's what it looked like before you can see the light's not great I do apologize and that's what it's like now after a sanding and they were both pretty much the same that's really good and it's only taken me about 15 20 minutes something like that so I've got um, one two three four five six seven uh, bilge areas to do got to get all the ballast out of here at some point so what I'm thinking of doing now is the back of the boat the ballot the bilge is done so I think I'm gonna paint all the back of the boat get the bilge painted with my final coat move all the ballast over to there paint this bit move all the ballast back put the boards in job done so but the next job now I'm not too worried about the ballast under there I'm not too worried about that at all under here um, that can stay for now I mean there's a lot of ballast there that's my next job I need to get under there shift all that ballast out from under there weigh it find how much it weighs replace it with steel billet and then the steel billet can go under the bilge get hidden away um, so that's the next job is clearing out under there as you can see my lovely neighbor Pete from Avalon 2 they've got a great um, a great blog and I'll, I'll link their uh, I'll link their blog in the description below but yeah constant supply of cups of coffee off Pete excellent Pete you're a gent hello to Helen as well so check out their vlog um, not a vlog it's a, a, um, a written blog absolutely brilliant read um, I'll link it below in the description go down and check that out they, they really are a great couple so there's the dog look looking sad for himself um, apart from tidying out the wood now get all that wood out in the back of the car all the rotten wood and them two buckets out apart from that I'm about done here now so um, yeah I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do uh, a more of a now I'm back in the boat more regular I'm gonna do more of a style like um, the boat that James built and release a vlog every day or two um, just to show what I've done that day so there you go there's my thoughts um, let me know what you think about the wires down the bilge in a, in a bit of conduit a nice long piece of conduit running down the bilge let me know what you think and also um, while the bilge is out and I I am mean, going to fit uh, fans down the bilge, I think, two or three, maybe 20 fans. So what I think I'll do is, <coughs> all the way through the boat, I'll have a fan in that corner. And then I'll put a fan in this corner. And then I'll put a fan in that corner. And then I'll put a fan in this corner. And then I'll put a fan in that corner. And then I'll put a fan in this corner. And so on, through the, all the way through the bilge, I'll go from opposite corners all the way out the bilge, all the way out, and then... I'll have the air sucking in from the front and blowing out in the shower uh, because the shower room is going to be constantly moist. So that's the, the exit I want. So I want the air to come through and then out. And then what I might do is have um, an extractor fan in the bathroom above the shower. And then the bilge, there'll be, let me, let me show you. The bilge fan, I'm st stacking wood here in a minute. But if you can imagine, the shower's going to be here. There's going to be a quadrant shower here. And then in that corner up there, I'm going to have a box section running from the bilge, from that corner, all the way up. Just only a little square box, about an inch, two inch square uh, box section that would run in right to the very top. And then exiting behind, because there'll be showers, uh, shelves here, a, bit, a big wall here, and it'll exit behind. And then above the shower, there'll be an extractor fan. So that that can come out. I mean, the, the, the air will flow out up anyway. But um, when the extractor fan's on for the shower, when you're having a shower drawing the moisture out that'll do the same for that it will so the fans in the bilge will probably only run they won't run 24 7 i will probably only have them running when the boat's moving when the engine's going so i'll probably have them have them wired in because the computer fans don't take up much power and what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll wire them into uh, the engine switch somehow 
or have a separate switch one or the other so that when I'm, I've got the engine running the fans under the bilge are constantly running all the time and as I say they'll suck air from the front under the under the tug deck they'll suck air from under there draw it all the way through the bilge a constant flow of air bringing out in the bathroom and then that'll go out through the extractor fan above the shower so because this is going to be a constantly damp area anyway obviously with the shower but I'll draw as much out as I can so I don't want to draw the area the other way because I'm drawing moist air from the shower through the bilge and it'll be warm moist air which is worse because as soon as it hits the cold bilge it's just going to condensate so that there shouldn't be any moisture up here apart from the water tanks they should be sealed uh, and they'll be insulated so there shouldn't be any moisture contacting them so the, the the air will suck in from the front under the tug deck right at the very front all the way through the bilge out the bathroom and out, out the top so there you go anyway hope you've enjoyed the vlog um going to be more like this more regular vlogs of what i've done each day so uh let me know what you think uh i want to try and release a, a vlog every other day or every third day um obviously i'm only down the boat two or three days a week at the moment but that'll be um as the weather picks up that'll be more regular so let me know what you think and um yeah hope you enjoyed today's video only a short one uh, but that's all you need just a little short snippet of what i've been doing so uh but like i said let me know what your thoughts are anyway hope you enjoyed please consider subscribing and uh tune in again soon and um take care of yourselves look after your families all right don't go working too hard nice cup of tea for me see you soon bye for now